Good evening. Let's get our song books out. We'll uh, turn to page 281. We'll do one, two, and four. All right, everybody sing out tonight, too, because you know preacher's going to be watching. It's good to see everybody tonight. Missed y'all Sunday, but uh, we had a good time. Uh, pray for the preacher and them. They're on vacation right now, a much-needed vacation. It's good for them to get away. The only announcements that we have, we know the youth is tonight is their first night back uh, in the youth class, so Jeff will be taking them out to the youth class here in just a little bit. Don't forget this coming Sunday, we're going back to our normal schedule with Sunday school starting at 945. And the preaching started at 1045. I've already tried to update the opening list uh, back there. We're just continuing where we left off. Uh, when we shut down, Brian Murphy was the last one. So this coming Sunday, Gene's on. Uh, so check the list again to see where your name's at. I've had to make some changes. And just let me know, since the schedule's changed, if anybody's going to be out of town on vacation and can't do that particular week, just let me know, and we'll get it swapped out. But other than that, I can't think of no more announcements, but like I said, keep the preacher and, uh, and his family in your prayers and hope they have a good time and get some rest and relaxation and come back ready to preach harder than he did Sunday, which I got to watch Sunday and it was absolutely wonderful. I hate it wasn't here. Um, but anybody else got any prayer requests tonight? Ms. Green? Anybody else? Whoop, yes. Okay. One question. Miss Heather? Okay. In the back. And gra my grandpa Taylor, he's still holding on there. <laughs> Miss T? Next question. Anybody else? All right. Uh, Isaac? You ain't going to tell on somebody, are you? <laughs> all right and if you want to let's all gather around the altar let's pray tonight uh joey if you would come lead us in a prayer and jeff's gonna play softly for us
Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for the opportunity to be here tonight, Lord. Father, most of all, Lord, I pray, God, that you bless the services, Lord. Let us all glorify you tonight, Lord. I pray, God, that you bless the, the singing, Lord. Bless the brother Mike, Lord, to bring the message to us, Father. I pray for our country. I pray for our president. I pray for each and every prayer request lifted up to you tonight, Lord. You know them all, Lord, spoken and unspoken, Father. Father, I thank you for Jesus, Lord, and I thank you for saving us, Lord, through Christ Jesus, your Son, Lord. And I pray, Lord, if there's anybody here, Lord, that hasn't trusted Jesus by faith to be their personal Savior, Lord, and accept his free gift, Lord, I pray, God, that they would do it tonight, Lord. And I pray and ask of it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I said, keep preacher in prayers. Uh, he called me today to let me ask me if I'd come do the announcements and stuff. And him and Jane had all the grandbabies and were taking them to a park to ride bikes. Uh, and I said, ain't that something? You get to go off on a vacation, you still get stuck babysitting while your kids are off having a good time. And he said, we don't mind a bit. And I know that's true. Um, but yeah, pray for Brother Mike as he brings a message tonight. But before that, Miss Heather, if you're ready. Ms. Heather's going to come sing one for us, and then we'll get Miss Jennifer out to sing, and then uh, Brother Mike. things in every journey that can break us. There are things in every journey that can break us. There are burdens that can bring us to our knees. But it's in these moments when our faith feels weakest that we simply stand our ground and just believe. Pray. Now, pray now. Right here in the storm, he's still the same. Pray now, pray now. There is strength and power in Jesus' name. So pray now. Oh, the silence doesn't mean that he's not listening. And the darkness doesn't mean that he is gone. Because he promised he will never, ever leave us. And you never spend one moment on your own. Pray. Right here in the storm, he's still the 
same. Pray now, pray now. There is strength and power in Jesus' name. So pray now. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Pray now, pray now, right here storm he's still the same hallelujah pray now pray now there is strength and power in jesus name there is strength and power in jesus name so pray now Pray now, pray now, in Jesus' There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well Jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed the victory is won he is risen from the dead and i will rise when he calls my name no more sorrow no more pain i will shall be my eyes jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed the victory is won he has risen from the dead and i calls my name no more sorrow no more pain 
pain, I will rise on eagle's wings before my God, fall on my knees and rise. I will rise. And I hear the voice. Good evening, everybody. Mm. I'm nervous. I'm sweating. <laughs> if you would, let's turn the Bibles to Mark chapter 8, two verses, 36 and 37. We're going to talk about a few things that we can lose. <clears throat> 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? As we look here, at the scriptures, you know you can lose something. We'll talk a little bit about the lost person first, and then we're going to talk about the saved, what the saved can lose. You say, well, I've got everything. I'm born again. No, you can lose things too. Believe it or not, you can lose them too. <clears throat> the Word of God tells us that a person can lose his soul. Man is made up of body, soul, and spirit. When the body dies, he's buried, buried the body back in the ground, it goes back to dust. But the soul and spirit, it lives. It lives for eternity. Eternity. Where is it going to go? It's either going to go to heaven or it's going to go to hell. One or two places. One or two places. I pray that it's no one here tonight that's, that's lost. But if you are, now is the appointed time. Now is the appointed time to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and be born again. The rich man, as we look at uh, Luke 16, the rich man died. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Being in torment. Being in torment. As you read through the 
these passages of scriptures here going on down because if you want to read it, I can, it's, uh, let me see, in Luke it'll be 19 to 31. I ain't going to read all those scriptures. It's just it's a lot of them. <coughs> Let's read part of them anyhow. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in, 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 in pearl and fine linen and, and fair substance every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid, laid at the gate full of sores. As you look at this, you land, you look at Lazarus laying at the gate of a rich man's house. Can you imagine, I don't know if there's any rich people in here, can you imagine a man laid out there at the entrance of your driveway if you hit a gate? He's out there, he's begging, he's got sores on him. I would pray and hope, thank you, Brother James, I would pray and hope that it's not one in this church that wouldn't give to him. And we're going to get in a little bit more of that in just a little bit, what we would give to him. But read on down through here. The rich man died. He went to hell. He lifted up his eyes. In hell. He was in torment. So even though you, if you die and go to hell, you're lost. Your five senses that you've got, you still got them. His body was buried. It's in the ground. But yet his soul and spirit is still in, is in hell. He still had sight. Because he seen Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. He asked, could Lazarus go dip his finger in water just to cool his tongue so he could still feel? He could see. He seen him across the gut. He could feel the torment from the hell that was by him. So he's, he can, he's got sight, hear, smell, taste, and touch. I looked it up, and that's what it says. As we look at that, for a lost man, I tried to, I tried to witness to someone this week, and was explaining some of this stuff to him. He says, well, I'm born again. I'm saved. I says, but uh, you're living in sin. He says, uh, all you do is ask for forgiveness. I says, but you're repeating your sin every day. Every day. I says, it's, it's no forgiveness of that. I says, we're all sinners. I says, but I'm not going out and deliberately do the exact same sin every day. It's no remission for that. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. He throws it up. He goes to preaching to me. He throws up the thief on the cross with Jesus, the two thieves on the cross there. He says, he went to heaven. He said, this first time, the last breath. He says, if I ask for forgiveness on my last breath, I go to heaven. I says, but that ain't what the Word of God says. That ain't what the Word of God says. I said, you don't know you're going to be able to speak on your last breath. Oh, yes, you will. Yes, you will. I said, no, you won't. He said, if I can, I'll think it. He'll still say it. I said, boy, I feel for you. I pray for you. You can't witness to someone like that. He's got all the answers. He lives for self. He lives for self. I got off on it. I shouldn't have even got off on it, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I ask you today if you're here today and never received Jesus Christ by faith into your heart would you please ask him to come into your heart today let this be the day for Christ died for all of our sin but not just our past sin we as born again believers he died for our past sin, our present sin, and our future sin. See, we're going to mess up. Even though, thank you, Lord, for this water. 
Even though we try to live our best each and every day of our lives, we're going to still mess up. Sometimes we're sinning and don't even know we're sinning. But sometimes we're sinning and we know we're sinning. But I have done some things. Well, preacher says, he did preach a message on one time. He said, when's a good time to lie? And I kind of like that message. There is sometimes I think it's a good time to lie. But sometimes we'll lie just to kind of protect ourselves. Something we done forgot about. Like a customer, like Brother Gene and me, we in business for ourselves. Customer called and we done forgot about. We were supposed to done done something. We were supposed to done called him. Supposed to done done something. Most time I say, I'm just honest. I forgot. But if, if I didn't forget it more than one time, I said, man, I just ain't here time. I, I'm right on. I'm going to get on. I'm going to do it right now. I just told a lie. As soon as I get off the phone with him, I said, Lord, you got to forgive me. I, I, I said, I didn't want to make this man mad. It, it, he knows I'm a Christian. I'm going to bring reproach against me and you too. Is that a good time to lie? No. No, it ain't. I have to ask him forgive me. Do I do it over and over? Oh, no. Oh, no. Because I'm whooped the rest of the day right then and there. I just feel like I had a beating right then and there. By the Lord, I'm whooped the rest of the day. I had to pray. Preacher called me. What? When did he call me? When? No. Monday. Call me Monday. Monday want me to pray tonight. Well, I had to look back at my life. I pray every day. Pray for forgiveness the other day. That wasn't good enough. Now if I'm going to come up here and stand behind this pulpit, I had to ask the Lord not just to forgive me, but wash me. Wash me thoroughly. Make me pure and white. I don't want to have no strikes against me. And I've been praying like that every day this week until now. Even tonight when I first come in here, I pray. Even when I got down there, I prayed again. I want to be on my best. I, when he looked down, I want to be white when he looks at me. I don't want to have no strikes against me nowhere. I don't want to see no darkness in me. I don't want to have no darkness against me while I'm standing here behind this pulpit and speaking to y'all. Because this is his word. His words, not mine. He is. We try to exchange when we, when we got born again we tried to exchange right here in Mark when we first read it so if what, what would you exchange for your soul well if you're living for the world you don't want to exchange nothing because you've got everything at your fingertips right here but we as born again Christians we exchange what do we exchange? We exchange the world for the kingdom. Because once you're born again, you learn enough about this word right here, you realize we own it all. God owns it all. All that he owns, we own. You say, well, why do we have to work so hard every day? One reason we work so hard because we want too many things. Things get in our way. To get in our life. God said he would take care of our needs. We ain't satisfied with our needs. We want things. Why do we want so much stuff? I got two and a half acres of yard right there where I live. I don't have time to mow it. It makes me mad every time I get out there and mow it. Why do I need this big yard? Even the church here. We got all this land. Here. Why would, yeah, I don't even mow it. <laughs> we got all this yard out here. <laughs> I hope we don't fill it up with graves, I <laughs> I hope we don't fill it up with graves. I hope we have to expand the church. But I hope we don't have to go back through the watershed stuff that we went through before. That was more headache than building the building. Three and a half years of that, that, that was tough. That was tough. That was tough. <laughs> if we move on here, though, let's get down to what? A saved man is going to lose. The first one is your testimony. 
as a testimony. See, we'll, we'll work on our testimony from the time we're born again. And we'll work on Sometimes it takes almost a lifetime to build a great testimony. A great testimony. But it's going to take just one little slip up to lose it. One little slip up to lose it. <laughs> See, some Christmas testimonies, they only exist just in, within the walls of the church house. Once they leave this building, go back to work, go back into the world, they don't have no testimony. I pray that none of us in this building tonight is that way. But I've seen Christians that way. I've seen them. You go back on the job. Go back on the job Monday morning. They look good, dress good. See two lost people sitting up and say, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Got a joke on to tell you. Tell them a joke. Might not be no cuss words, but yet it might be something about a woman, or it may be something about mocking God. Now, this man just left the church, but he'll laugh at that joke. That's a bad testimony. If he gets up in the morning and he'll read his Bible, or if he'll read it at night, if he'll set a time aside every day to read his Bible, to get in the Word of God, and then have a special time to pray, he'll stay close to God. When they do that, God's going to feed him. The Holy Spirit is going to feed him. Give him scripture for that right there. That's what he's going to do. Then he'll build his testimony. Or he may just want to go on vacation. Well, our preacher's on vacation. Well, I'm on vacation. Nice Wednesday night. I ain't got to go to church tonight. I'm on vacation. Well, sometimes it is hard if you've got a lot of kids and you're going on vacation because you don't pack church clothes. You're going to the beach, you're packing shorts and stuff to wear on the beach. And most times tank tops and stuff like that, you don't want to wear in church. But if you're used to going to church on Wednesday night, why not you and your wife have church right there in the room at the exact same time? Instead of you going out trying to find a church, one of you can read the scripture. The other one can explain the scripture. You can get together and sing a song together. Have church right there. Don't get out of the routine. Always be faithful. God wants a faithful servant. And if you don't continue in it, you're not going to be faithful. You stay out one time, it's easy to stay out another time. It ain't no problem. Because that's the way the flesh is. But you get... You get one sudden on this shoulder and one sudden on this shoulder. The Lord's in here. A little angel sitting up here. A little devil sitting over here. Something hurts. That's the reason I know the devil's over here. Because <laughs> the angel, nah, he ain't, he ain't put no pain on me. But that devil, he'll put pain on you. He won't only put it in your muscles. He'll put it in your mind and everywhere else. Even out here in the world. He'll make things break down. He'll make things come at you all at one time. But we've got to serve the Lord. We've got to stay in his word. Even though he might be sitting over here trying to get me to flare off this away, I got this no here. He's pulling me this away. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go straight line. I'm going to keep straight. I'm going to keep focused on God. I'm going to stay focused on him. Some break down. I said, well, how did that happen? See if I can't get it fixed. Get it fixed. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My help say sometimes, he said, what do you think that's going to cost? I don't know. Probably $10,000. Man, I hate to think I had a bill like that. I said, I hate to think I got it too. But what you going to do? You got to pay for it. You got to get it fixed. I said, I just thank the Lord. Did I get the money in the bank? I can't pay for it. So what do you do? Praise God. Come Sunday morning, I'm $20,000 in the hole the end of the week. You know what I tied on Sunday morning? The same thing I tied on the week when I did make money. When the month rolled, end of the month rolled around, my balance is still the same. I said, how can it be? But it always is. 
is always that. You can't outgive God. You can't outgive God. So He wants us. That's what we've got to give Him. We've got to give Him us. We've got to give Him us. <clears throat> so the Christian, that his testimony is just inside these walls right here when he comes to church on Sunday. But when he goes back into the world, he acts just like the worldly crowd. He gets off work. A couple of his buddies said, look, we're going to stop down here at the store. How about stopping down here? We've we got something we want to talk about. They go in the store and buy a beer. Buy him one. He said, man, I, I can't drink that beer. Well, Jesus drank. That's the first thing lost me. I ain't going to say. Well, Jesus drank. You can't drink a beer for us. And then he ain't got no testimony no how. All right, I, I, I'll drink it. But we as Christians, just in close to God, we ain't going to do that. Or if you do do that, and they know you're close to God, see, they're going to tempt you. The lost is going to tempt you because they're watching you. They want you to slip up. They want you to mess up. They want to catch you at the wrong place. They want to catch you on the wrong street. They are looking to see you mess up. That they'll never forget. I don't care how much good you do, they'll never remember that. You could give them a million dollars, they will forget that. But you could slip up one time as a Christian, and you calling yourself a Christian, oh, it ain't nothing to him. It ain't nothing to him. He says, he say he ain't no better than I am. So you lose your testimony. You lose your testimony. Number two, it ain't but three. Things the Christian can lose. Reward. Your reward. <clears throat> Look in 1 Corinthians 3, 10 to 15. <clears throat> According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another build their own. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundations can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's works shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's works, of which sort it is. If any man's works are bad, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's works shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So we can lose our reward. You say, well, what? how can we lose our reward? We're tithing, we're doing this, we're doing that, all we're supposed to do. The things that we do through the Lord Jesus Christ he will reward us. It will remain. But the things that we do through self-will, self-will, we'll lose it. For an example, let's see. Let's pick, I'm going to use Mark. I ain't never used him. So I'm coming to church. I'm all dressed up on my way to church. Mark's broke down. I don't know who he is. First time I seen him. He's on the side of the road. He's headed down to a buddy's house. I stop to help him. See what's wrong. He says he don't know. He says, I'm no mechanic. He says it just cut off. I don't know what's wrong. I says, got gas in? Yes, got gas. He said, but it cut off. I don't know what's, what's going on. I said, well, where are you going? Oh, I'm just going down here to my buddy's house. I said, well, look, I'll tell you what. I want to help you out. But I'm on my way to church. And I've got a buddy that 
that works. He's a mechanic. He's got a garage out. And I says, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be at church. And I'm thinking about Brother Jim. I said, now, if you'll come on and go with me, we'll go to church. And I says, after church, we'll come back. And if it ain't nothing major, we'll see if we can't get it going. If we can't, I said, he'll see if he can't get it to his garage, and he'll fix it on Monday. I said, you can't? He tells me, well, I ain't got no money. I can't get it there. I said, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. We're going to get you back on the road. I get to church. I come up to Brother Gene, put my arm around him. Brother Gene, got an ox in the ditch. At the church, I need some help. <laughs> I introduce him to this fellow, and then I tell him what I need. I said, if you got any plans at the church, I understand. But if you ain't, can we go see what we can do? That's giving ourself to this guy. That's what God wants us to do. He don't have no money, so if I have to pay the bill, that's fine. I'm paying the bill. Paying to get it towed to Brother uh, James' house. James says, well, I'm going to give him the label. I just need for the parts. He's got his reward. He won't be burned up in fire because he's gave him his labor. He gave him his labor. I've done all I can do for this man. But if Mark sat down, I said, well, look, I ain't got time. I pull out $100, he held $100, call Brand, tell him to come get you. That's what I would want to do because I don't want to mess with it. I, ain't, I ain't, don't want to work on something. don't want to get nasty. don't want to get greedy. I have to crawl up in this car. I ain't no telling what's going on. That would be my flesh. That would be what I would want to do. But that ain't what Christ would want me to do. So I've got to do what Christ would want me to do. So you see how you can lose your rewards. You can have them in heaven. Or we can just do what we think we want to do. What we think we want to do, it's never the right way. Not if we want treasures in heaven. It's never. Never works out. <coughs> Cliff said he got up here one time and hit nine pages. I ain't got but three and a half, so we ain't be here long. No, we ain't be here long. <laughs> I believe that a lot goes in the name of Christ. We'll be burned up in the judgment seat of Christ. Especially in the, I don't call this a mega church, I, in, a, in a mega church. Churches just got thousands in it. One's on TV. They're hollering for money. I know it takes money to stay on TV to preach. But I, I wonder how many souls actually get saved by looking at that. Because some of those preachers, I hear more begging for money than I do preaching God's Word. And those are the ones I'm talking about. Now, it might be some that's, that's true, that's right on. And even this buddy I'm witness to, he'll look at a preacher on TV. I said, well, is he going to come and preach your funeral when you die? Well, no. He said, I might send him some money sometime. I said, well, why? what's he doing for you? Why wouldn't you go to the local church? Christ died for the church. I invite him here tonight. Oh, I'm going to church, but I ain't going down. He's on Facebook. He's trying to be a star. He's trying to sing, but he ain't singing no gospel music. <laughs> Help me. Pray for that boy. He needs prayer. He's a good boy good hearted boy he's just lost other than that he's a good boy he's just lost he, he knows enough about the bible to carry him straight to hell straight to hell he, he read what he and, the, and analyzed it and he thinks he's got it down pat he ain't read the whole book <laughs> he ain't read the whole book <laughs> he hasn't he haven't read the whole book. Christians can lose the reward. Romans 
16, 17, 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause us division and offense, offense contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeching, deceiving the hearts of the simple. That's talking about these big churches. These, these men that can, they got a way with words. I'm a full-blooded redneck. I don't have the way with words. You got to come down to my level to understand me. I can't go up to that level for some of their words I don't want to understand. My preacher was going to go to college, seminary school. I told him, I said, I rubber you not. I said, I've listened to preachers that go to seminary school. I says, they teach you all these big words. I says, you going to preach in Roxborough? Redneck people's in Roxborough. It's a few educated ones. I said, most of them is lost. Most of them is lost. I said, but these country folks, rednecks like us, we understand big net, big net language. I do. Brother Cruz, you understand? Even though you're Spanish, you understand it, don't you? Say amen. Uh. <laughs> so we can lose our testimony and we can lose our rewards. Number three. What can we lose? Preacher, he spoke on this a little bit Sunday. Joy. Joy of salvation. In Psalms 51 12, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me. With thy free spirit. <clears throat> David has lost his joy of his salvation. His sweet fellowship with the Lord because of the sin of adultery and murder. That's exactly what happens when we sin. When we break the fellowship with the Lord. You lose the joy that comes as the result of your fellowship with God. The reason being is that sin separates us from God. It separates us from God. See, the believer, it separates the believer from God. You don't lose your salvation, but you do lose the joy of walking and talking with him. I need this. Every day on my way to work, I have to talk to the Lord. I just, some, sometimes on Saturday, me and my wife, we're going, she goes with me or something, or we got to go somewhere else. Sometimes she'll go with me and look at a job. She don't like to, but sometimes she will. <laughs> but, and, but it's just my routine, my habit. When I get in the truck and crank it up and I, when I take off, I got to start talking to the Lord. I got, I got to praise him. I got certain people I got to pray for. And I just rejoice in the Lord. I mean, that's my fellowship with the Lord. Even though I've done already been in the house and probably done read the Bible for 30 minutes, 45 minutes sometime. But I'm just used to talking to the Lord at that point in time when I get in my truck. That's my time. That's pretty much my prayer closet right there. But I love it. And sometimes, if, if you, if you meet, was to meet me going down the road, you say, well, what is that nut doing? He's talking. <laughs> and I am. I'm talking. And sometimes I feel as though the Lord is talking back to me because I go to hell in there. I don't know if you've ever done that. Because I like the Lord a question. And then this answer popped back in my mouth. I said, yeah, Lord, you're right. I said, I, I shouldn't have done that. And, I said, why did I do that? Why did that happen? And then that answer, I said, yeah, Lord, you're right. I mean, I, 
it's just like I'm talking back and forth with the Lord. It's just like he's talking to me. But that's a happy time. I mean, I'm enjoying myself. I'm beside myself. Sometimes I look in the fact and see if he's in there. I mean, it, it's a joyful time. He's right there with me. He's right there with me. He's right there with me. <laughs> we saw this when Adam and Eve in the garden, when they sinned against God, they hid themselves. Why did they hide themselves? Because they were afraid of God then. But they've been walking and talking. They were afraid of God. It's the same, same thing when we break fellowship with a friend. Now, I can't, I hadn't known Gene that, that long, but I can't, it's my friend. I would hate to do something to offend him, and I would hate for him to do something to offend me. If he does something to me or to offend me, I'm going to talk to him. I'm not going to get mad and upset. I ain't going to fuss at him and, and all that. We're going to talk about it. See, if we can't come to an agreement, if, we, if he don't, if I don't win him over to my side, he's still going to be my friend when I leave. I'm not going to disown him as a friend. Why? He's in this church. I'm going to serve right beside him. It ain't going to be no different. It ain't going to be no different. In the same way with each one of you. If I do something to offend you, come to see me. If I'm wrong, I apologize. If I'm right, I still apologize. Why would you apologize if you're right? Because that's what a good Christian would do. That's what a good Christian will do. It ain't no wrong and right. It don't matter who's right and who's wrong. The better Christian will apologize. The better Christian will apologize. It's in the Word of God, but I don't know what scriptures you're turning to. I have read it. That's where I got it from. I, should, if I, I didn't know why I was going there. I'd have, I'd have had it. I'd have looked it up. But breaking the fellowship with Christ, that's a miserable life. Have you ever done something that you didn't mean to do and you felt like just kicking your own self? Why did I do that? That was wrong. Why did I do that? It was years ago. It's probably been 15, 20 years ago. We was doing a work. I was pushing a logging road in up yonder for the logger. We pushed it in. The road's about a mile long, going back on the farm. The man that owned the land lived up in Pennsylvania. It was his mom and daddy's farm. They farmed it. They died. Well, they had been dead for 30 years. He was still living up there. He wasn't going to come back down here. He was thinking about selling the land, so he's going to cut the timber off of it. I pushed the road in there for the logger. Well, they cut the logs out. I went back up to fix everything back, get the logger tied up, see the creek banks back and all of that stuff. And I noticed when I pushed the road in there, was an old hair, a little old ball hair, I mean, about four foot wide, two little wheels on the front, a little, little seat on the back. We hooked the mule to it. And when all of it was intact, Every bit of it. Pine tree then growed up through it. Said no bit of trees that it did. I said, man, I'd like to have it, huh? So I asked the uh, timber guy, I said, want to go back? I said, you think about it, how about I ask that guy that will he sell it to me? He said, if I don't forget it, I will. I never did think nothing else about it. So we went back up there and went straightened up everything. He was sitting there. Me like I'd done that. I picked it up, set it on the back of a con truck. It was all the way up down in Reedsville. Got all the way back down here to Yansel. I got the heavy equipment on my truck to help get the ton truck when we had the seeds and all that stuff and the hire on the back of it. Pulled up at that satellite. It was just before I got to that satellite. So all the way down, God tell me, it ain't yours. I said, I was arguing with the Lord. He don't even know what's there. Trees done grow up in it. It ain't yours. I stopped at the stoplight. 
He was there. I called the boy behind. I said, look, there's folks there. To, everybody gets off at 5 o'clock. We can get back to the shop. We had a little bit over time. I said, y'all need to turn around and carry that hat back up there. Do what? I said, you got to carry it back up there. I said, God won't let me take it. <laughs> he don't even know it. I said, I know it. I said, you got to take it back up there. Took it all the way back up there. He said, you know, it's, it, it's going to take another hour, hour and a half. He says, a mile back in there. What we got to carry? I said, I can't help you. You got to take it back. They took it back up there. They wore me out about that time. I felt so good. I felt so good because I'd done what was right. When I put it on the truck, one little thought come into my mind. You know that ain't yours. You stood in it. I said, well, I can carry it back. He won't ever know it. And all the way back in there, that won't show. That won't show. That won't show. I had to take it back. I said, you put it back as close to the spot as you can. Well, we can't get it back over. Number. I said, back up to the edge of the tree. And raise up the dump and let it slide off that down. I said, please don't break it. And they said they did. And they said it slid off and set right back up just like it was sitting. They said, but it ain't sitting where it was sitting there. He said, about five feet from where it was sitting there. They said, it's sitting in the wood. I said, okay. They went up out of next week, put a cable up so nobody can get in there. man sold the land. Now, Rain, whoever bought the land, he owned it hard then. But I tried to call the guy. I called the guy twice, going to go back and get it. And left my voicemail, but he never did call me back. Well, he left me, well, he did call me back one time. He said, I ain't over the hire up there. And, uh, <laughs> but I never could get back up with him, so I never did get it. But when you're born again, you're saved. You get convictions like that. I do. It was nothing. It didn't mean nothing to that guy. It was just like a knife was sticking in me. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. The joy of fellowship is taken away. It's bad enough when it's taken from a friend, but when it's taken from Jesus Christ, it's taken from Jesus Christ. Oh, man. You can't, we often wonder how come our prayers is not being answered. We're praying, we're praying, we're praying. Because we've done a little sin in our life. And see, the scriptures tells us it separates us from God. He quit hearing our prayers then. We've got to come back and repent. We have to come back and repent. And in God's eyes, just like David here, he committed adultery. That's a bad sin. But then, he hit Bathsheba. Husband murder. But in God's eyes, that adultery sin and that murder sin, one is no greater than the other. One is no greater than the other. In our eyes, one sin is greater than the other. But in God's eyes, sin is sin. He don't compromise. Sin is sin. <coughs> Ephesians 4.30 And give, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now, a whole lot of that goes on around here. If you look up the word grieve, it means to offend. How many of us want to offend God? Or to displease. How many of us want to displease God? Or to provoke. How many of us want to provoke God? See, that's what sin does. It does all of these. It does all of these. But sometimes we'll grieve Him right here in the church room. When you won't even shout amen, you won't even praise God. Say, praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. You grieve the Holy Spirit. Do you think that might be offending the Lord? I mean, the preacher, he's reading God's word. And you're not even agreeing to it? Are you out of fellowship? Are you trying to displease God? Or are you just trying to provoke him? 
You want to get it mad at you. I mean, he holds you. He just holds your next breath. That's all he does. He just holds your next breath. He spoke the world in existence. Are we not scared of him? We should be. We should be terrified of him. We should be terrified of him. So we shouldn't grieve him. We shouldn't grieve the Holy Spirit. The Word of God tells us our prayer life will suffer as a result of sin. I told you that a while ago. In Psalm 66, 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, then Lord will not hear me. He will not hear me. So that little old bitty sin that you think you do, and then you say, why is everything going? I'm praying to God. I'm tithing. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be. I'm in church. You ain't thinking about that little sin you done. You ain't repented of it yet. You ain't repented of it. He's going to forgive you. He tells us that he's going to forgive you. He's just waiting for you to ask him to. That's all he wants. He just wants you to ask him. How do we restore our joy of salvation? Psalm 51, 1 and 4. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sins is ever before me against thee. The only, haven't I sinned, mm. and doeth this evil in thy sight, that thou mayest be justified, when thou speakest, and be clean with thy judgments. Follow David's example. Confess, acknowledge, repent. Ask God to mercy of his loving kindness. Claim God's promise. In 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, from all unrighteousness. My head a little bit mobile. I'm going to stop right there. <clears throat> the lost man... He's lost all the way if he don't receive Christ. We as born-again believers, we can lose something too. I've preached it to you tonight. I pray that all of you are in good fellowship with God. I pray that you're not grieving God. I pray you're not provoking him. I pray you're not displeasing him. But I think each and every one here tonight, I don't think now, none of us is perfect. All of us probably got something to pray about in our life. But we'd have slipped up, done something. If you don't have nothing else to pray about, look up here. Pray for this one right here. I need prayer. I need prayer. All the time. Pray to God. And put a whip on me. Keep me straight in line. I'd rather be like that and be against God and be against his word. Sometimes I wish I was a puppet on a string, but he gives us that free will. He gives us that free will. God is good. God is good. All right. Let's bow our heads for a moment in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, I just love you and I thank you, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to to speak here tonight, Lord, I, I just pray and hope that you'll please, Lord. I feel sure and positive that this was the message that you wanted me to preach, Lord. I didn't follow it word for word, Lord. I, but I pray that the people took heed to the word, and I pray that they'll meditate, dwell upon it, Lord, and use it in their life. Maybe they can use it as a witness to everyone else. They need to protect the joy of salvation. 
protect the fellowship with you, dear God. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. May we be with one another. Help one another, Lord. Guide and direct each other, Lord. There's times, Lord, we, we may not show it. I know I don't. We need help. And sometimes it's just a, just a loving arm, just a word of comfort. It goes a long way sometimes, Lord. And I know I'm liking sometimes for giving it out. But help us here tonight, Lord, as a, as a church, as a whole, Lord. And may you be glorified through it all. I love you and I praise you, dear God. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all.